Well, I can't believe that it's been two years now since we decided to just kind of start over, get rid of all the stock stuff here in our Class C motorhome, and just uh, really customize it to our own specific needs. In fact, it looks so drastically different in here now that I can barely even remember what it was like before when we had kids with us and and you know things were just so much different in here with that just standard Class C layout. Having made that decision to just kind of gut everything and start from scratch and really customize it was the best thing that uh, we could have done. In fact, I think it's time to give you an update because I've been getting a lot of specific questions lately about specific pieces that uh, we that we installed and built and you know a lot of folks are looking to do similar stuff in their RV and they just want to know how things are holding up and if I would do it differently the next time. Let's go ahead and do an update. I'll just go by piece by piece starting from the front of the RV working our way back and show you some of the tweaks that I've made and show you how things are looking today. And I also want to show you some uh, smaller modifications that I've made throughout the last year or two as well that you haven't seen yet. And I think that's going to give you some, some good ideas for stuff that you could probably do in your own RV. <laughs> Now a good place to start here is probably going to be with the flooring here because I get a lot of questions about flooring from folks who are looking to tear out their carpet and replace it with this vinyl plank flooring like we did. And to be honest, you can see that after a couple of years, it looks really, really good. In fact, it looks just the same as it did uh, when we installed it. And since then, I've, uh, I've completed the flooring all the way back and throughout the bedroom and around the bed which was a little bit challenging because there's just some tight spaces back there but the entire floor has been replaced with this uh, continuous uh, uh, looking uh, vinyl plank flooring it was very easy to install it's very easy to clean since we do a lot of camping out in the desert it tends to get a little dusty so it's really nice to be able to uh, just kind of sweep it down, uh, wipe it down or mop it down just to get rid of that dust layer as opposed to just getting all that in a carpet. Now I do get asked quite often about edging, specifically what did I use for edging and since this is a, a floating floor, did uh, I use any sort of adhesive or anything because you're supposed to leave a gap for for movement, expansion, and all that stuff. Now, what I ended up doing was actually just using really inexpensive edging here. I think I got it from either Lowe's or Home Depot. And this is just a little plastic uh, rounded edging that I nailed in here and painted to match the wall. And on the cabinets there, I found one that was kind of an oak uh, color, which as closely as possible matched the, the look of the cabinet. And so same stuff, just kind of cut it uh, with a little saw. And in some areas, I did actually uh, use some sort of adhesive to seal up the bottom edge of the edging, specifically around uh, the refrigerator, because sometimes I get water coming in from behind the refrigerator when I may wash the RV, or maybe there's a strong rain with the wind so i didn't want that to seep behind so in some areas around this wall specifically i did seal it up a little bit and also in the shower area around the shower pan i also uh, sealed up a little bit there i haven't really had an issue with anything moving or buckling just really nothing uh, in the last two years as a result of doing that but it's your call whether you want to do that or not So these recliners have uh, been our primary seating here in this space and after a couple of years they're still in pretty good shape as well. I haven't really noticed any uh, wearing or any seams coming apart or anything like that. Of course we're pretty careful to not wear anything in our pockets or clothing that's going to puncture the fabric here on the recliners. and. You know, we're not going to jump in when we're all sweaty and all stuff like that. So we're uh, pretty careful with, with the recliners and so far they've held up pretty well. Now a couple times a year what I'll do is uh, clean them and they recommend over at Rec Pro uh, this multi-surface cleaner, this 303. And we just spray it on, wipe it off. And they also have this uh, protector that they recommend. So I picked up a couple of 
these and uh, clean and protect it a couple times a year or as needed. Now, overall, it's been holding up well. The mechanical and electrical components still operate. You can see I'm going all the way down here and it's uh, still super comfortable. We spend a lot of time in these recliners. Now there's a couple of things that we've uh, modified on them. One of the things is that uh, the cup holders themselves, they used to have uh, kind of a silver ring around the top, just painted silver. Now we didn't really like the look of that silver, so I spray painted these black instead and it looks much better. Now the other thing is that uh, this center area here, we have a nice storage area here in the middle and for the person sitting on this side, I have a place to put my cup or my phone or whatever. But for the person here on the right, there isn't a whole lot of space and you can't really uh, put something right here and worry about it not tipping over or you know, a bowl of popcorn or something that's not going to work. So the solution I came up with was to just cut a small piece of wood and then I sealed it. And you notice it's just small. It's got a couple of strategically placed holes. So what I do is take out the cup holders and uh, cut these so that they're really that they're really snug. And then I can just place the cup holders here in the hole and then push them back in. And then I have a nice little table here that is good enough to set something on, a cup of coffee, your phone, or, you know, to share a bowl of popcorn when we're watching a movie. So that works out really well. And the nice thing about this is it's not permanent by any means. You can just quickly remove it and put the cup holders back and then you're back in business with no little table. Now the model we got also has this uh, USB charging port on the cup holder. You can see it also has a little light here. Now what we notice is that uh, when you try to charge your phone or a tablet or anything like that from this port, it's not a fast charging port. So uh, you always get this message that it's uh, the power is too low and it's going to take too long to charge. So we really stopped using it and instead what I ended up doing is to install a charging port here inside the center console. So when I built that side console over there, it has a 12 volt DC uh, port in it. So it wasn't too difficult to, to tie into that uh, positive and negative 12 volt line and then run that underneath here, you know, underneath the whole uh, recliner here and create a receptacle for USB uh, devices here inside the center console. So it's pretty easy just to be able to plug in a couple of uh, devices in here and you can either leave them in the center console here to charge or if you want it out, you just leave it out here. So it works out pretty conveniently uh, for a couple of uh, devices. All right, let's talk about this guy. Now it's continued to be the uh, kind of the focal point of this whole space. You know, it serves multiple purposes. It has our TV in here. We've got a, a table that can be used as a desk or a place to eat. And also this very functional uh, storage on the side that we use for shoes and stuff like that. So it's really been great to clean up this space and give us a lot more room in here, even when the slide's in. So that's been a, a huge improvement to be able to just move around and just have all this space when we're going down the road and, you know, with the slide in. So that's worked out really well. I haven't had to really do much to it and it's continuing to look great and function great. You can see it's really solid and anchored well to the wall and the floor. Every once in a while I'll have to tighten down the uh, the screws that are holding it into the, the frame on the side. There's a couple of L brackets there. And since we mostly boondock all the time, we're going down washboard, bumpy roads, and uh, every so often uh, they come a little loose and start to squeak a little bit. So 
Um, it's definitely held up to the abuse that we've put it through in the last couple of years. Now for seating, we also keep a couple of folding chairs here that we can easily take out and have a place to sit while we're eating here at the table or if we have company over. When we're not using them, we just fold them up and put them away. I've made some modifications uh, to this and I'll start with uh, the table here. Uh, what we've noticed is that when it gets really bumpy and we're swaying back and forth a lot, the little magnet that I put in here to hold this just wasn't really strong enough so I got rid of it. I installed this little lock pin here and it's just a little pin that goes inside this little hole. When we're on the road we just put that pin in there and then this locks in place and it's not going to flip out. In terms of the TV lift mechanism, you know, it was just inexpensive. I got it on Amazon. Uh, we typically just open it with this remote that uh, we have mounted in the center console there on the recliners. And I've never really had a problem with it at all, even though it wasn't a ton of money. And you know, we still have the same TV here. And it just comes up, goes down without any trouble and I'm pretty happy with it. I expected it to maybe fail eventually, but like I said, never had a problem with it. Now, if you look back behind the TV mounted back here, we have a Roku device, so that's connected directly to one of the HDMI inputs of the TV, and that's how we get all of our streaming uh, Netflix and HBO and you name it, Hulu, all that stuff. So that's all programmed into our Roku device. And uh, you know, when we have Wi-Fi, it's uh, that's how it connects to the internet. So that works out really well. And also underneath here, there is just enough space to install a sound bar and it's right under here. I was able to find a sound bar that fit perfectly here underneath this countertop. It was out of the way. I was originally gonna mount one up top, but I realized that I wanted the sound right in front of us. And if I could squeeze something right in this space, then that would be the perfect setup. And you actually don't really notice it as well. But it provides great sound for the TV. Also, it's uh, Bluetooth, so it works as a Bluetooth speaker when we wanna to listen to music and, and all that. It was a little bit of a challenge to mount this because uh, all of the stuff is on the underside and I couldn't really get to it. So I ended up mounting a couple of plates to the mounting holes of the soundbar and then mounting those plates to the bottom of this cabinet. And then the power line to plug it into AC power, it goes through a hole to the other side here. And then that's plugged into a power strip that's uh, inside the TV cabinet. Works out really, really well. Well, here in our tiny little kitchen, we decided not to make too many changes and do anything too drastic because for the most part, it served our needs and uh, it was pretty functional. But there were a few things that we wanted to change and we took care of those. And one of them was to, to paint the walls, obviously, because we were repainting everything in the RV. So at least the color on the walls matched and it didn't have that uh, wallpaper look to it anymore. One of the big things we did was to actually remove the range hood that was here. It was just this ugly range hood that really served no purpose because it didn't even vent to the outside, but it stuck down about this far and it was always, it always seemed to be in the way. So I just got rid of it and just unhooked it and replaced it with just a little uh, light under here because for the most part, that's all we needed was a light. And we have a fantastic vent fan above here. So if there's anything that we we're cooking that needed that, we just open the window and open the vent and it, and it seems to work just fine. And the other uh, thing was to put in a new faucet because we replaced the original faucet, which was much lower. And we wanted this larger, taller faucet that has, you know, the little pull out thingy here and had a spray as well as the solid uh, stream. The swap out for this was super easy. Uh, everything kind of fit 
just in the place of the old one. Uh, the only uh, the only thing that I had to really do was to go out and buy a, um, a little adapter. Uh, and it's just going to depend on what uh, faucet you end up getting. But there's an adapter just to adapt the water line uh, to the new faucet. And once I had that, it was it was perfectly fine and, and everything worked out just great. So I'll put a link to this if you're interested in this particular one. It's been working great for us. Now we also have one of these little flip out things here for extending our counter space. So it's not a ton of counter space, but it's it's adequate for what we need. And we also have been using this for many years. It's, it's a bamboo cutting board that sits on top of the, uh, the range here. So that's there most of the time and it creates a nice little handy uh, surface, extra surface area to put stuff and, and get ready, prepare food, things like that. The other thing was to add this outlet here. We found it much more convenient when we had uh, and we had appliances sitting up here that we wanted to plug in. We could simply plug them in here as opposed to plugging them in here under the cabinet here. And we have this cord hanging, which we don't like. And I, I made a video about that whole wiring change and you can go check it out. I'll link to that in the description as well. Now the last minor mod that we've made here in the kitchen area, which seems kind of trivial, but it's been super functional, is to install this uh, paper towel roll holder just in here in this tucked away in this corner. We've always had this paper towel roll sitting here on the counter or we used to have a vertical uh, stand, but you know, it just takes up a little bit of space and every few inches uh, counts when you have a small kitchen. So being able to put it out of the way, pretty much out of sight as well, because from here down, you really don't see it and it just works perfectly. Now a question that would always come up was, uh, what are you gonna do with this overhead sleeping area over the cab? And our original plan was to build some sort of a nice cabinetry here and a place to store office supplies and various things. But ultimately we decided not to do anything with it and still keep it as a partial sleeping area. And we got rid of this big old piece here that goes over the front and uh, just got rid of it and we keep it at home. But, you know, we can still sleep, you know, one person comfortably up here. If we want to climb up there and lay down, it's totally fine. Uh, for the most part, we use it to store things and just keep things out of the way, like blankets and some equipment, some workout gear and various things. Now one thing I have done to make better use of this overhead bunk area is to turn this spot here into kind of a, a stand-up workspace. Now if you have a stand-up desk and you like working that way, you're going to like this one. So the solution is pretty easy. I just cut out a piece of wood to fit right inside these uh, trim pieces so it's really snug and I keep it under here. So I can just simply pull it out when I, when I need it and I have a nice stand-up workspace. It fits perfectly in this space. I ended up using just a half inch piece of, of wood. And then I also got a half inch piece of aluminum and was able to just snug that piece of aluminum on the front. So it gives it nice strength across the front here so I can lean on it and have to worry about it warping and bending to support the weight. But it's a great place to sit here and work on a laptop or do whatever you need to do and stand up and not have to be sitting down all the time. The nice thing also is that it's really close to this uh, DC 12 volt uh, power outlet that I created here on the side console by the recliners. And I picked up one of these um, USB-C to 12 volt charging cables. So when I'm using my laptop, since it can charge via USB-C, a good tip to get one of these, if you're uh, especially if you're boondocking, running off of an inverter, and you want to save power because it just doesn't use as much energy to charge your laptop that way, instead of going through that giant uh, brick <laughs> that you have to plug into an AC outlet. Now, when I'm not using this anymore and I want to put it away, we're going to be hitting the road. I just lift up this cushion, and I can slide it in, and it's out of sight, out of the way and we can get in and out of this cab area nice and easy. Now we've got 10 windows in the RV and 
We ended up just replacing the window coverings for just about all of them, um, except for maybe the one here in the kitchen. And because it had the mini blinds in it, and I don't know, the mini blinds are just pretty functional to be able to just turn them <laughs> like that. So we ended up just leaving that. And, uh, but we did replace uh, and recover the valance that was above them to match everything else like this one here. So let's just start with the front of the RV here and I'll work our way back and then let you know what we did. But um, I ended up just rebuilding this valance on this main window here that's behind our TV. And the reason was I wanted it to be able to hide the, uh, the hardware for this roller shade. There's two roller shades here and this is a roller, a custom sized roller shade from Rec Pro. And there's a day shade, which is great. We keep this down all the time. And then, you know, that goes up like that. And then once that's down, if you wanted to just black everything out during the nighttime. So far after a couple years, they seem to be holding up and uh, still opening and retracting pretty well. So pretty happy with these all around. Uh, one of the complaints people seem to have about roller shades is that they they may bang around a little bit while you're driving. And we tend to keep this one down all the time. And I have a magnet mounted here at the bottom. So that keeps it from, from that bottom bar just moving at all. And we usually just keep this one up. But another thing that I've done is to just add some, oops, let me stop this add a little bit of felt to the back of this part that might bang against the wall. So it's just stick on felt. So then if it does hit the wall, you don't get that tapping that's kind of annoying that people hate. So yeah, add a little bit of something to the back and it'll keep that noise from annoying you. That noise from bugging you. So yeah, roller shades here work that great. Uh, roller shades on the other side above the recliners also working out pretty well. Now I didn't need to do a valance on that one because I was able to stick all the hardware behind the cabinets and, uh, and everything stays hidden over there. Now the window that is in the front of the overhead bunk area had this, uh, had these blinds in there that would just hang at an angle and I would always have to replace the strings in those a lot. And it had this uh, balance on the top also that was just bulky and it, it always got in the way and we don't really use that window very much anymore. So what I ended up doing is just removing all of that and creating some um, filler pieces, just using some polycarbonate plastic cardboard stuff. And then I wrapped them in the fabric that I use for the, for the valance here. So they match. Mm -hmm. There's three panels, so there's one on either side. And the one in the middle actually can slide back and forth so that if we did want to look out, we can just move that over and we can see out. Now, one of the final things I did with that window is to put some uh, mirrored uh, window tinting in there because during the day, the sun really beats on that and uh, can create a lot of heat. So with that insulation, with the window tinting, it's really cut that uh, heat source down quite a bit and it also makes a big difference when it's cold for keeping this whole area warm. Now moving down into the hallway here we've got this these two large windows here on this wall in the hall and they used to have a big old valance up here and and this gigantic uh, day night shade and I would always have to worry about having to restring that one because it's really big. We ended up just taking all that out and it freed up some space here in this hallway, which was great. But that these giant windows, uh, you know, they, they're great to look out, but they also let in a lot of heat and, and cold. So it was nice to be able to just uh, put something up here to block all of that and insulate it better. And it's nice to get up in the morning and just open the curtains. And then at night, you can just close them and it's super easy and uh, it just feels nice and cozy in here. Normally what we'll do is we'll just take these and uh, put them back. I created a couple of uh, just little ties here and I can just tie them back like this and just gives it a nice look. And these curtains themselves are just inexpensive blackout curtains that I picked up and they're about 16 bucks for each of these panels. So pretty inexpensive and they're really easy to swap out if I wanted a different color or something, but they work just fine. What I uh, did for our curtain rod here was to actually <laughs> just reuse the uh, L brackets 
that uh, were holding down the, the valance. And I had some leftover uh, little metal pieces that matched the color. And those are from a patio umbrella, just to parts. I kept them and, uh, and just screwed into the end of them. And they created this really nice little low profile curtain rod that worked perfectly for this application. I didn't have to find any sort of big bulky curtain rod. Now there's no more valances uh, in the bedroom here at all. We got rid of all of the valances and painted the walls. Everything kind of matches throughout the RV. And also added another curtain back here to cover our emergency exit window. And that's really nice. This is also the same curtain. It's a, it's a blackout curtain. So that with our, the new shades that I made for the smaller windows, all three of these windows, this whole area back here in the bedroom is totally blacked out at night. In fact, I always sleep in in the morning because I don't know what time it is because it's always so dark back here. And uh, that's great for sleeping. And the windows are nice and insulated and it stays nice and comfortable back here. Now these uh, insulated shades that I created for the back bedroom here actually create a lot of privacy and they've been amazing. So, you know, they cut all the light out and they're super low profile and they're easy to just open and close halfway and all the way and we really love them and they're so easy to use and even though they're uh, removable like that using those uh, French cleats in there they don't move at all in fact we uh, expected them to bounce off a little bit as we're driving down bumpy roads but but they don't at all and uh, especially those ones in the corner by each side of the bed those have been great because with the valances there before and those bulky blinds, it took up a lot of that extra space on the side of the bed that we just didn't have. So it just feels a lot less crowded back there and you don't feel any coldness from the window or from the outside when it's cold outside or hot. So very insulated, very functional. We love them. All right, since we're back here in the bedroom, let's talk about lighting because I've replaced all of the lighting fixtures throughout the entire RV, mostly with these really low profile, often dimmable uh, LED lights. So uh, back in the bedroom here is one example. I added these dimmer switches and these small puck lights. Now we can individually control uh, the dim on each side, the light intensity, and turn off one when uh, one person wants to try to go to sleep and the other person wants to read or something. So these have been great uh, for back here in the bedroom. And I've done the same thing out in the main living area above the recliners and above the TV cabinet there. So it's just been a really uh, a great way to create some accent lighting and be able to have some control over the light. And when you're sitting down, I just love having dimmers to kind of set the mood. Well, the biggest changes in the bathroom here, besides the new flooring and a little bit of paint on the walls, has been the removal of our old shower enclosure. Now, this is something I just did recently, <laughs> and it was just a last minute thing before we uh, headed south uh, this winter. and. It's been great. I mean, we've uh, enjoyed just having just more open and much more light. And taking a shower in here has been great. There's been no leaking. These little fake walls that I built are holding up really, really well. And everybody's happy. <laughs> and the nice thing about it is just being at the uh, sink here and just being able to move around. You don't have that glass that was here that's totally banging into you all the time. And it just felt uh, more confined here in the bathroom. So that's been a great update here in the bathroom. Now the composting toilet that we added is also a big upgrade and uh, we're getting used to it. And I think we've got it uh, down now and are totally uh, comfortable using it. And since we boondock 100%, pretty much 100% of the time, it's been a real game changer in terms of managing waste and all that stuff. But. So that's pretty much it here in the bathroom. Uh, it's definitely a space that we use all the time. So we've been having a conversation to try to figure out which one of these upgrades that we've implemented here that we've really enjoyed the most. And for me, it's been hard to pick one. 
How about you? Not hard for me at all. Definitely <laughs> the recliners and the TV lift cabinet. Oh yeah. Hands down. Yeah. I never want to go back. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, that that is a pretty cool setup in there. It's what we use the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this update, this walkthrough of all these upgrades. I've made a lot of uh, extended videos about a lot of the larger projects and some of the smaller stuff I've even shared on Instagram. And I'll make sure I drop information for all of that stuff in the video description. And uh, if you like the video, got some ideas out of it, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you're new and want to see more videos like this, more upgrades and DIY projects, hit that subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Got any final words, Melissa? Um, get out there and do some DIY, do some upgrades. Yeah, it's totally worth it once, yes. you're, once you're done. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.